like, what the heck is that? <laughs> so creepy. Welcome back, everybody. Have you ever seen something, sweetheart, that you saw and immediately thought, why does this exist? Of course. Whether it's an ad or a product of some sort, you're thinking to yourself, what in the world? Why did this leave the brainstorming room? I know there's plenty of cases like that. You guys at home have seen them, so let's take a look at a few together. Today. Weirdest advertisements of all time. In the 90s, Nintendo's Game Boy was very popular, and this was one of their ads. Game Boy, more fun than a ferret down your trousers. I've in 2017, are you Casper serious? I've definitely seen that before somewhere. I just beg to differ. I'm not sure that it would be. Yeah. I think the ferret might win. Game Boy, it's like eight pixels, black and white, not very fun. Back then, maybe, but by present day standards, I'm taking the ferret. Back in the day. Sleep released this ad. Is it using a face the week roller as a microphone? It says, I feel like it's one of those face roller things that ladies do. Yeah, what even is that he's using as a mic? I have no idea. Yeah. It's not a microphone. It aired during the week at 2 a.m. It says, can't sleep, and then there's a phone number. If you call the number, you can listen to wind chimes, waves crashing. Oh. You can also hear a brief history of the cocktail weenie. Apparently, the number still works. Wait, so like pre-sound machine? This is a, that was an, a late night TV ad. You could call a number and it would play sounds for you over the telephone. Dude, I'm about to test this theory right now. Are you telling me this you number better, still works? You I gotta, you better. I gotta try this out. Hello, can't sleep. Choose from one of the following menu options. Press star to return to the main menu at any time. Wow. Press one to hear the relaxing sounds of the ocean. Don't mind if I do. Press Wow. Yeah, getting very sleepy. I'm awake. I'm awake. Wow. I mean, listen. Now we know. In all the videos we do, we're like, that's fake. I know. My man's pulling out some bangers right now. That's real. The telephone sound machine. So if you ever, you know, can't access your app for the sound From machine, your phone. you can just call this toll free number that probably steals all your credit card information and social security number. But hey. At least you'll get to sleep. And last but not least, in 2018, IKEA released this advertisement. It was a brochure that said, peeing on this ad may change your life. And that strip right there is a pregnancy test. And if somebody who's pregnant pees on it, it shows a discounted price for a crib. Okay, that's just good marketing. See, now I trust this guy. Initially, I wouldn't think that was real, maybe. But because the 180 because number the, is Because the sleep legit, machine number, yeah. Now everything he says is... Accurate. He's, yeah, he's the most trusted guy in my life. This is the strangest ad I've ever seen. All right, so whoever made this TikTok, they said someone called Danny Gonzalez. He's another YouTube commentator, makes good videos. He has a series on craziest Instagram ads. Some of these companies make the ads as absurd as possible because they know it's gonna make people talk about it, right? I don't think it's funny. And called Danny Gonzalez quick. Oh, hit it with the duct tape wax. That? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Have you seen stuff like this on Instagram before? No. No? Why don't, maybe just because you've never downloaded a mobile game in your life so you don't get served ads like this? Obscene, weird ads that aren't meant to like showcase the game as much as they are just to get people talking about it. All right. And you have to download out of morbid curiosity, right? That looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. It really does. <laughs> I don't know what they're selling, but I want it. Little baby's ice cream. I eat little baby's ice cream. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. I spring from activity to activity. I love my job. I love my life. When you eat little baby's ice cream, you'll wink and nod and hug and high five each other with great enthusiasm. As an ice cream enthusiast, did that ad speak to you? Not even a little bit. No, that didn't no. make you like, oh, let's- That is creepy let's as all hell. <laughs> Apparently this is an old YouTube video that has a lot of views. So the marketing campaign clearly worked. Oh, was an ice cream company based in Philadelphia, founded in 2011. This was an active ice cream company. I ought to know about uh, so it. You would know about it. Like even if it's like a West Coast only ice cream company, my wife would know that it exists. She would know their normal, most popular flavors, and she would know whether it was made in-house or locally outsourced from like a dairy creamery or something. I'm not kidding. Be like, oh, no, name the top three uh, ice cream parlors in Nova Scotia. 
She'll nail it. I'm not going to put you on the spot. No, but no. If there is a trove of ice cream knowledge, it is this woman's brain right here. Apparently, the marketing worked for visibility, but maybe the ice cream sucks because this company is no longer around. <laughs> Let the record show that I do not eat shitty ice cream. I've told this in a video once before, but oh, we have, were yeah. on a date. No, no, don't. We don't have to go all through. You again. just brought it upon yourself. I just said I don't eat shitty ice cream. Yeah, Leave you'll it throw it out if you don't like it. Yes. Food inventions that have failed. That is a wow. Salad gelatin. Oh my God. Celery flavor. The big lobster. Celery flavored jello for salads. <laughs> nice try. That's they were, nasty. They were trying to corner the healthy foods market. They're like, oh yeah, jello, it's not just a snack food that's full of sugar. You can put it on your salad and that's it tastes so like gross. celery. Yum. That looks like salad. <sighs> My brand new unnecessary invention allows Ooh. you to fit a 25 ounce beer in a 16 ounce glass. All you have to do is slide the ounce extender onto your favorite pint glass, <laughs> and now you can fill up your pint glass and add a Dude. few extra ounces. Come on, did this man it actually- It gives new meaning to just having one beer. That's my favorite one so far as a beer drinker. It looks like he pulled it off a lamp, if you ask Remind me. <laughs> it just so happened to perfectly fit his pint glass. I mean, I guess the name of the channel is Unnecessary Inventions. He's got 6.4 million followers. That's Holy amazing. Crap. Yeah. I invented the Sporty Susan, the only hands-free way to enjoy your game day meals without ever missing a single play on screen. Order ahead of the ah. game with bracket bites. What a legend, dude. Just That's so your entire brand is Unnecessary Inventions. It's so niche, but so good. So I designed this necklace here that helped me solve one very specific problem I have and it has to do with my AirPods. Because you know that feeling of when you're casually listening to something, but then you go to take one of your AirPods out. But now yeah. the music completely stopped Stop. playing in this ear. All you have to do is grab the extra AirPod and slide your AirPod right into the cavity. That's hilarious. I have never owned AirPods, so I didn't know that they stopped if you oh, took it out of one ear. Oh, my headphones do that. The Bose ones, they also do that. If do you they? take it out of one ear, it pauses. My Raycons do not take that more expensive brands. <laughs> What is this? TikTok made me buy it. This is a genius invention. Where can I buy one? I Ron would want to humidify their room with soda. The whole place is about to be sticky as hell and infest. Just humidifies liquid. I imagine it's not meant to be it's used with to go a in soda. A water container. Probably... We used to have them at work. If... Some of the girls would have it at their. Oh, like one of these things. You've seen those before? Um... Similar, but it's like a little smaller thing. It's a little can... desk size. You can plug it into like a USB and have a little humidifier. Death. Interesting. I don't hate that for someone like you really deal with dry skin, you know, chapped lips and you're on the go a lot. Winter. You know, you're not going to be hugging, you know, lugging around a normal humidifier that you keep in your bedroom. Dumbest inventions of all time. These are exactly what they look like. These are grass flip flops. Okay, hold on. I'm kind of okay with that. Those you are? those kind of go hard a little bit. Cuz you like the feeling of grass on your feet? Yeah, I mean not, not I don't think I'd like the feeling of it as much as that they just go hard. You go to the party, you kick off your grass flops, and like, no, who's who else is wearing grass flip flops? Badass, little artificial turf under there. Come on, dude. The thong grass flops. These things go harder than trigonometry right yeah, here. Your birthday's coming soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently this product was made for the people that like feeling fresh grass on their bare feet. Except it's not real grass. I don't know that there is a huge market for these, but people bought them. On the market. See, there's the problem, right? If I'm buying grass flops, that grass better stay put. I love that this guy's very like giving a very serious review of why they failed. They find it more surprising that someone wore these and wrote a review on them. <laughs> Fair play. I want the grass flops now. <laughs> All right, so this one I have a lot of experience with. There's a very particular way, right? Yeah, you have to be like kind of touching you the have side to, of the barrel. That's right. You have yeah. to rest it on the side of the barrel as you're turning it. Because you don't want to get your hand on that. It's Hell disgusting. Hell no, you do not. <laughs> yeah. All you need, and I guess the reason these things are so mass produced because they're so popular, it probably is billions of dollars of bottom line. It would cost extra. But just like a little button on the handle oh, yeah, that, that locks it. Happen. Just be like, oh, lock it, flip it, sure. unlock it. Hey, we're going to take a look back at the dumbest inventions of the 20th century. That's why we're here. You ain't got room in your tenement, your apartment. Put them out the window. Wait, they used to just hang babies out the <laughs> window? I don't think that there's ever a point where there's not enough space in the crib that I'm gonna choose to hang my baby out the window. I feel like the idea is that if you live in like an industrialized city, maybe for that time, to you're get fresh getting air. in some fresh air because there's nowhere else, you don't have a patio or whatever. That is actually how my rabbit lived. When I was growing up, my older sister had a rabbit and my father cut out a hole in the wall of our garage. What? 
and built a indoor outdoor cage. I don't think it's too uncommon. Maybe I'm wrong, but the rabbit could like be indoors and then travel outside. Man, that feels like a million years ago now, but yeah. My rabbit lived like industri in industrial age babies. I don't wanna be a Wait fiend a in the rain, get your fix. You need an umbrella. The L umbrella? I think they're on something with this. Looks like it's Al Capone smoking this. Alfred Hitchcock. That's funny. Shorty is a tank, inhaling Whoa. 20 cigarettes at once. Wiz Khalifa's entered the chat. <laughs> These guys. I could probably hit it once and then I'd be coughing for the rest of the goddamn day. Yes. Like, yeah. Real different. Young Audrey Hepburns. When you were too lazy to shave by yourself, so instead you got lined up with six other men at the same time. There were definitely some throat slit using this goddamn machine. When she <laughs> says he's out cheating on her, he's really, he's really with the boys getting shaved. <laughs> Nobody gave a f about the babies back then. <laughs> Look at that. The dual baby sling, like- What the heck is that? Feels a little unnecessary. Yep. Just wear it on mom or dad, especially like, for the times, that's super absurd. I would say bizarre to see like anything that suggests the man would share the responsibility of baby care for, real. for that era. Like these days, sure, you know, like well, we, we can share a baby sling and carry it around, but back then, forget it. <laughs> oh God, it's another one of the, oh! Ah! I see these things all the time and they're like, swipe to download. And you're like, who would download this? I don't see these as much on Instagram anymore. Okay. I see them a lot on Twitter though. Oh, I definitely don't the, go on you Twitter. You don't go on Twitter. The scariest TV commercials part two. The last one got me right in the feels. Listen to Renko's baby laugh a lot. I remember this. <laughs> you do know I do. I remember the baby laugh a lot. No. I don't know if I've ever seen this commercial, but So creepy. <laughs> the music they're the face. Oh. The music they're dubbing it's over. It's basically a female it. Chucky. What the hell is that? Real like uh Alice in Wonderland type beat. It was a kinder? Okay. Which still exists. It still exists, yeah, apparently. How do our children see it? Oh. It's one of these like anti-drug, anti- POV, how your children see you if you've been. <laughs> Why the rabbit though? What do rabbits have to do with being dry? Is that. Is that a synth? What a strange ad. That is way too dark. I mean, I am not sure I can handle this. <laughs> How do our children see us? When we <laughs> so that was probably around the same era. I remember the old ones would like, uh, this is your brain, and this is your, your brain, brain on, on drugs, drugs yeah, right? I remember that. There were yeah, some yeah. crazy ones of those. The marketing money they spent into those anti-drug commercials. I think ironically, there's been research done that shows it did nothing to subvert any sort of drug use and may have lent itself to the proliferation of awareness and drug use. I don't know what the metrics of that might look like right. and how you can quantify or measure that. When I look at old 90s dare ads or like this is your brain on drugs ads, that looks kind of fun. I'll try one of those. <laughs> let, me, let me try that. <laughs> you didn't go to public school for elementary, but they used to have a dare officer come in and talk to you as well. And like, I remember like fourth, remember fifth grade specifically having so, the dare officer come chat with you. I remember this because I, I swear they had this. I went to first grade, kindergarten to first grade before I started Wow. homeschooling and I pretty sure that existed in the elementary school where I was. And then I went back to- I don't to think they talk to kids that little. No, probably not. Maybe it might've been seventh grade because I also went to public school in seventh grade mm. before coming back to homeschool. Very complicated history yeah. of my, my schooling. That was so creepy. Yeah, that being said, this is my brain on watching too many things that shouldn't have maybe existed in the first place. And I've had enough. My brain actually is more on drugs right now than if I was actually on drugs. Now, After you did get that. something out of that. What We're I gonna get? get you some grass flip-flops. Oh my God, the grass flops. They go hard. They go so hard. Not as hard as you guys go for watching us for some reason a couple times a week. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.